Okay, so we talked about uh, the practical steps to overcoming addictive behaviors and attitudes. Now let's talk about stewardship. Um, stewardship is about is it mine to use and is this a wise use? Is it mine to use and is it a wise use? First Peter 4.10 Um, says uh, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Um, Matthew twenty five fourteen through thirty. Lost my place there. Matthew twenty five uh, fourteen through thirty. And I'm not going to read this whole this whole parable. You can if you want. Um, but basically. Um, there's this man who goes on a journey and he gives gold to three different servants, okay? And the one servant does one thing with it, the other servant does something else for it, with it, but the other, the last one, he buries it. And then when the servant comes back, they're all giving him, giving him, coming back, and, and they're all giving him, you know, what they've done with the money. And um, the one says, you know, I've done this and I've got, you know, this much. And he says, great, you can get this much. The other one says, "Well, I've done this with it. I've, I've got. I've made this much more." And he says, "Great, you get this." And the last one, he says, um, "You know, I, I knew that you were a hard man, so I just buried it." You know, and and then then the guy says, "Well, you wicked servant, you could have at least put it in the bank and got and got uh, got interest on it." Which, if you know anything about interest with with banks, I mean, it's always been under what it, what it can be for you to actually make an investment off of it. So he's saying, "You didn't even. You didn't even." Um, you didn't even do anything with my money where it kept it even below um, depreciation prices. So I mean, you, you actually um, you actually worked ba worked against me in this. See, it wasn't about just simply maintaining the thing. In fact, he was called wicked for maintaining. It, he was expected to increase it, even by an insufficient amount. Even by an insufficient amount. Now I'm not trying to read too deep into this parable. I'm just saying, you know, how it applies to us in this in this point. If you try and fail, that's one thing, okay? And I'm no longer talking about the parable. I'm talking about principle. If you try and fail, that's one thing. You are genuinely trying, okay? If you don't try, of course you're not going to fail because you you didn't even try. You have to do something in order to do something wrong. Um, uh, so every so always ask, is it mine to use, and is this a wise use? Am I using this wisely? Um, everything I have is a gift from God to be wisely invested in my time. You only have so much of it during a given week, and you have as much as everybody else. And when it's over, it's done with. There's nothing else you can do with it. When you die, that will be it. Um, money. You only make so much a year, or you know the, the government only gives you so much a year, or whatever. Um, there's only so much money in the world anyways, uh, and you can't take it with you either. I mean, remember that. Your thoughts, are you, are you wasting your, your thought life on things that, that do not glorify God? You know, these are things that genuinely need to be addressed, need to be thought about. Um, your your things, do you have things that are just sitting in storage when you know a homeless guy down the street that could use them? Um, once resources are spent, um, they cannot be reused. Money. Time, thoughts, things, they're gone. We cannot live however we want. We are examples. Okay, everything we do has an effect. I know those words are blocked there, but um, everything we do has an effect. Um, there's no such thing as, as throwing a rock in, in, in water and not expecting ripples to go out. Um, though there are, are consequences for our actions, God does not give up on us till the very end. We have until death to be restored to the Lord. So, uh, there is a planting time and a harvest time. I'm continually amazed by those people who don't invest in their younger life and then expect to receive um, some kind of retirement or something when they're older. Well, that's not how it works. You have to invest in order to reap a harvest. You have to plant in order to, 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 to plow. I mean, plant in order, plow in order to reap. I think I said that right. Uh, excuse me. I'm, I'm saying I'm. But let's consider this: you plant some corn, and you're going to get some corn back, right? Right. You're going to more than you planted, even. Um, maybe an insufficient amount, but you will still get some. Um, but if 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 you are not planting, you cannot expect to go out and, and, and harvest. 
Um, in fact, Proverbs says that it says that the that the foolish, the lazy person does this. You know, um, they they're not doing anything at at, at 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 planting time. But then when harvest season comes, they're like, oh, let's go grab something. And they're like, where do we get it from? Um, you will never be a teen again, for instance. Your children will never be toddlers again. After you raise your children, you must influence your grandchildren. See, there's 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 stages of your life. There's times. There's planting time and harvest time. And once it's gone, it's lost. That's it. Um, I know a retired guy now that, that some people would call lazy. He did his time working jobs for a long time, and he he, he was faithful to those jobs. He only had two jobs, and he and he got uh, the, his 25 marker on both of them, buddy. Um, or 20, 20 or 25, I forget what. But anyway, it's not important. My point being, he worked then, so now he's able to take it off. Now he's able to go and be lazy. And he doesn't even deny it. He says, yeah, I'm lazy. I worked for that many, that many years. I'm not going to work now. <laughs> you know, I, uh, you know. So, Sunday service or Monday visit to prison. So, I mean, like, what time is it? Is it sermon time or is it worship time? When, when you're in service, notice that there's times and seasons for things. And everything in life is run by a time and a season. Um, you know, places that, like for instance, a, um, a, a water park. Water parks aren't open in the dead of winter in Minnesota, for instance. That's just stupid. <laughs> you, you can't honestly expect that. Maybe, you know, some places in like the Caribbean or something, but anyway, see what I'm saying. There's a time to witness that person or to teach. See, sometimes we're trying to witness to somebody when it's not time to witness to them. It's time to be praying for them. See, sometimes we're moved to an action by prayer rather than realizing when it's our time to speak. See, or as kid, or as adults, sometimes we think that we have to always be saying something to our kids, even when it's not wise time to say something to our kids. So, what time is it? Be 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 aware of time. And one of the greatest ways to, to um, no longer become is to get out of laziness is to be aware of, of time. You don't receive back as you invest. One seed makes much produce. Although, and sometimes you you invest in things and it falls apart, like with the, with the stock market stock market crash. You have to you know realize that these things happen. A life of sin can be forgiven in an in an, in an inheritance renewed and an inheritance renewed. A life of sin can be renewed in an in, or forgiven in an instant. And an inheritance can it can be renewed in that moment. Remember, inheritance is, is is handing something down to your children. If you accept Jesus, obviously you're going to have an, a new inheritance, a better inheritance for your kids. Um, God is merciful in His blessings and delayed in His wrath. Never forget that. Never forget that. You do not receive back as you invest. God is merciful in His blessings. I really met. I really messed up when I I went out of high school. I was supposed to go into the ministry. Maybe. And you messed up, and, and, and that was something that, that that is probably lost forever. I'm not going to deny it. That's just the way it is. But you have to find peace with that in seeking the Lord, and you have to realize that the Lord can restore things, and he can still give you blessings, and he can still have a purpose for your life. Um, for those of you who uh, maybe were, were convicted of like um, uh, child molestation and those kinds of things, um, and then were saved, uh, you know, it, Child molestation is very bad. But when you are saved, you become a new creation. And God still has a purpose for your life. I know it's hard, you know, you can't live in you can't live in certain places, you can't uh, work at certain places, you know, you have all these different things that you have to uh, hop through and, and different things. I understand that. And once again, this is a perfect example of how you reap what you sow. Perfect example of it. Um, but um, with that being said, um, God does still have a plan for you. Um, so, how to correct uh, physical and spiritual laziness besides that thing that I just said about time? Um, fast or do not give food. Genesis 3:19 talks about uh, the effects of the fall. Okay, and I want to I want to make sure that, that that we're understanding here. All that I'm saying is, um, when someone is is lazy, training them. Through not giving, not giving food. If you don't work, you don't eat. I'm not saying be heartless. I'm not saying have no compassion. What we do is we see a homeless person on the side of the street and say, "Oh, you don't work, you don't eat." That's not what he's saying at all. That's drastically taken out of context. First off, he's talking about the body in Thessalonica, the Christians in the body of Christ. Them, they were were expecting a handout without doing any of the work. Okay, so Paul said that they should work. 
for their for for their food. Yes, absolutely. He's not saying that you should do this for everyone out there. And also, here's another thing: when your kids go in and, and and disobey the Lord and then and they and they um, do a bunch of dumb stuff and then constantly expect you to bail them out, you you are hurting their character development. You may try. You may think that you're being there for your for your kids. You may think that you're really helping them. You're hurting them. Um, if you're on like government assistance, for instance, teach your kids how to take care of things and how to how to how to get a job and how to work for things. Because what happens if something happens to the to the economy where, where government handouts aren't a thing anymore? What happens if, if he's not if your children child is not approved of that? You see what I mean? And and so the government says that they're not going to give him any money. So I mean, what happens in those situations? Well, he's gonna be, he's gonna be screwed. So I mean, so 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 think about these things. Um, and 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 if you have have a child, I mean, I have I, this. These are the kind of situations I'm talking about. A 40 year old guy still upset with his mom for not being the perfect parent, um, and then uh, getting in jail and having his mom bail him out. That's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. He should not be eating. If he's not working, so I mean, he sits at, sits at the house all day, um, doing pretty much nothing, and and you see what I mean? It's time. There's a time to grow up, and that's what I'm talking about. Um, so if you are having a problem with with laziness, fast, fast. When you give up the food and give that food to someone else, buddy, that'll hurt. Or um, when you work, um, when you work for things that that really does that really does teach you to respect that. Um, but but I, what I'm saying is don't don't equip your child to do stupid things. Don't be heartless and, compa and without compassion. Once again, balance, balance again. There are reasons to help to help your child, yes. But there is also times when you need to let them grow up. When they're 20, 22 years old and, and they need you to bail them out for the umpteenth time, it's time to just let them resolve the issue. There's problems in their heart that are not being dealt with. Okay. Um, that may sound harsh, but remember, you're doing it for their best interest. You can't think of what feels right. You have to think of what's best for them in the long run. Okay. Um, learn to work hard. Uh, Proverbs six six through eight. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its, its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. Um, and then um, 26.15 says, A sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He is too lazy to bring it back to his mouth. So learn to work hard. 3. Rise early. Proverbs 26.14 says, As a door turns on its hinges, so a sluggard turns on his bed, always wanting but never attaining, always having desires, to-do list, all these things that never get done. Uh, also, respect time. Psalm 90, verse 10. You know, man's days are limited. We used to live a lot longer, um, but then um, man, God lowered man's uh, days to 120 years. But then um, in Psalms, it's lowered again to about, I think it's around 70 years or so. Um, and obviously this is the, the rule. I know there are exceptions to that, but people generally speaking die around 70 or 80, um, sometimes even earlier, depending on where in the world you are. Psalm 90 verse 10 says, um, Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures, yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. Sobering thoughts. Sobering thoughts. You know, we all have a limited time on Earth, and once it's gone, it is gone. You have to uh, be a respecter of time. Respect uh, uh, people who say, "Oh, I, 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 this or that." You know, there's 24 hours in a day. There's the same for everybody. If you spend 10 hours sleeping, and the other, um, the other, maybe another five or six playing video games. I mean, there's you know, 16 hours of your day gone already. John 9:4 um, says. And I want to encourage you, if you're dealing with people like the people I'm describing, please do not, please do not um, be impatient. Be slow to anger, okay? The, the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Remember that. 
um, John 9, 4 says, As long as it is today, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. See that? Night is coming when no one can work. Proverbs 10, 5. He who gathers crops in summer is a prudent son, but he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. Um, time is no respecter of persons, and once lost is gone forever. Don't give laziness a start. Well, it's just a five-minute snooze. Don't even give it a start. Your life starts to slip by so quickly. You spend 20, 20 hours a, a day on video games, four hours sleeping, your life changes. You work at a dead-end job, you don't have any desire to do better, but you hate where you are. It's just a bad place to be. Don't give laziness a start. Proverbs 6, um, 9 through 10, says, um, How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief, and scarcity like an armed man. Um, so let's talk about reinvention. Refuse to give Satan a foothold. That's something my mom used to say all the time. What does that mean? That means when you when you get angry, let your anger rest. Okay. That means when um, um, hold on, where am I? At? Um, that means when you start to get when you start to feel um, irritation towards somebody, you don't let it sit there and you don't you don't think about it. You don't let it you don't let it stew. Um, when your parents do something you think is dumb, you don't you don't keep going about it. You when your kids you know you don't you don't sit there and gossip about them to everybody else. You don't let Satan have a foothold. You don't give him that 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 finger in the door. See what I mean? Because he'll just keep prying it open wider and wider. How do we do this? Judge yourself, thoughts, actions, attitudes, words, motivations. Judge yourself. Judge yourself. Acts 3.19 says, um, Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, uh, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Um, and, uh, and then in 1 Corinthians 11.31, If we judged ourselves correctly, if we judged ourselves correctly, 11.31 says, um, But if, if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. <sighs> if we were if we were just judge yourself correctly. I mean, goodness sakes. Um, we, we, we judge everyone around us, but then we don't judge ourselves. Or we don't judge our attitudes. We don't judge our motivations. What's driving us. The things that we're doing. Was that right? Was that wrong? We always make excuses for what we're doing. Um, as compared to God and His Word, not your opinions and not other people's opinions. Change daily. Don't become stagnant. Always grow. Always, always adapt. Always, always move forward in the faith. Never reach a place of saying, "I have arrived. I'm comfortable here. This is where I belong." Continually grow, serve, and focus on Christ. Never plateau. A plateau is a level plane. Okay. But here's a, here's a little, a little, um, a little surprise about plateaus with Christianity. They don't exist. You are either going forward or back. Okay. There is no, there is no plateau with Christianity. Um, Saying Corinthians, so when I say never plateau, I mean never reach a place where you think you're plateauing, because that would mean that um, you think that you're comfort comfortable and you're not actively moving forward, which means you're actually moving backwards. It may not make sense to you right now, but um, trust me, it will when you wake up one day and you're definitely far away from where you want to be. Saying Corinthians 4, 8 through 11 says, um, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. Um, okay. That takes us to uh, 12, verse 1. I must go on boasting, although there is nothing to be gained. I will go on to visions and revelations from the Lord. Um, what was my point with that? Um, um, I guess my point was the fact of of, of, ouch, of of not reaching a place where you think that you're so smart or whatever, but by um, moving moving forward with that. Um, anyways, uh, reject prideful attitudes. 
learn from everything. And I do mean everything. Others see you differently than you see you. So by listening to other people, the people you don't like, the people who said it wrong, the people who are your friends, the, the speakers that you've heard the same message a thousand times, learn from everything. You don't have to accept everything, but learn from everything. Even in every criticism, there's a negative truth if you're able to listen to it. Uh, I got that from Gordon MacDonald. Um, great insights in a book called uh, Renewing Your Spiritual Passion. Uh, others see you differently than you see you. Listen to others at least with a grain of salt. Um, prior, the, see, the pri prideful person says, I'm not going to listen to them, not them. See what I mean? You're prideful against them. Um, Proverbs, um, or is it prejudice? Oh! Proverbs 3.11 says, um, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not pre um, resent his rebuke. Um, the Lord does that to people that he loves. Um, 6.23 says, um, For this command is a lamp, this teaching is a light, and correction and instruction are the way to life. And then 12.1. 12.1. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but whoever hates correction is stupid. So, uh, the past is the past. Good or bad, it's, 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 it happened. Moving on. Today, seek after God, love others, um, and do right. Yes, and do right. Dudley do right. Um, you know, I, there's so many people who, who guilt themselves himself over the past, and so many people who don't learn. God wants you to remember your past long enough to learn from it, not long enough to, to fall into, into guilt, okay? There is a middle ground there, a balance, you could say. Um, the past is the past. You gotta let it go. You know, you gotta let it go. Some things are are a, a mark on you for forever. I'm not gonna deny that. If you are once marked for child molestation, you are forever branded a child molester. I get that. See what I mean? But um, uh, time to move on from the past. You know what I mean? Don't don't um don't put yourself in another position where that could happen again. Don't uh. Don't tempt yourself with things. I mean, if you have a problem with looking with the little kids, I mean, goodness sakes, find help. Get help. And I'm talking about psychologists' help. There is definitely something wrong. Um, and actually, that can that can be can be an indicator. Can be an indicator that you are doing things like looking at porn, um, involved with drugs, um, drinking, those kinds of things. It can be an indicator. Not is, but can be. Um, so, the past is the past, and let it lie. Um, we will find fulfillment as we put God first and follow His ways. Matthew 6, uh, 25-34. Um, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or what your body, what you will wear. And it goes on the last, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. He doesn't deny the fact that there's going to be trouble. He just says to take each day's trouble by itself. Um, um, never settle in your walk with Christ. I already kind of talked about this. Hebrews 6.1 says, um, I can't remember exactly, but it says, do not... Um, no longer going back to the same. Ugh, let me just read it. Hebrews 6 1. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God. Okay. First uh, Peter 2 1 through 3. I'm going to stop there. I know, that, I know I kind of stopped mid sentence there. But I hope you see what I'm saying. That idea of continually growing, continually seeking after God, continually... Um, you know, the more I seek after the Lord in prayer, the more I realize how much more prayer I need. It may sound like a little bit of a contradiction there, but it, it is true. Uh, the more of God you need, the more you, the more you have, the more you realize you need more. First Peter 2, 1-3 through says, Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. Um, don't ever say to yourself, this is good enough. Don't ever, uh, God always wants you to... Uh, you. I typo there. God always wants you 
to uh, seek after him in a deeper and a newer way. Uh, be humble, be loving. Definitely be humble, be loving. Um, Christianity is a lot about balance and not a lot about extremes. Um, be clean, not a germ, germ freak or a slob. See what I mean? Be moderate, not overeating or anorexic. Don't have to only uh, only pray and read your Bible, but you don't have to never read it either. Don't have to give up all forms of entertainment, but you don't have to watch everything. Don't have to spend night and day in a church, but you don't have to never go to church. See what I mean? There, there's a difference there. Um, what you put in will come out. Um, Matthew 15, Matthew 15, 18 through, 18 through 20. But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart, and these defile them. Uh, for out of the heart uh, come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. See what I mean? That's in the heart. People who say that... Um, it, it's just in people to do right. That's not true. It's in us to do bad things. Okay, we just are too ashamed sometimes to do those things. Um, these are what defile a person, but eating with unwashed hands does not defile them. Um, what you put in will come out. If you eat trash, your body will not be healthy. If you watch trash, your spirit will not be healthy. If you listen to music about sexual immorality, immorality you will probably have a harder time being and thinking pure. Just, I mean, this is this should be natural, uh, natural, you know, reasoning for us. Ugh, come on. My little mouse clicker disappears all the time. Uh, if you watch a horror movie or rebuke authority, you will have demonic influence in your home. Um, just the natural principle there. Continually surprised by the amount of people who are rebellious people. Then their kids are rebellious. And then, you know, bad things happen and all kinds of stuff, and they're always trying to justify that rebellion. No, I was justified in doing something stupid because this person did something stupid too. Okay. Uh, be passionate for God, um, for God, by refusing to fall in love with the world. Religion that God, that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this: to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. You know, the people who are who I think are the most, um, who I found, are the most um, hard, difficult. To, um, to to witness to, um, to to bring into deeper communion with the Lord, to make changes around, are the people who've been in the church for over 20 years. It's not the drug addicts. It's not the people who, who didn't grow up in church. It's the people who grew up in church and now are, are being a bother to the church. They're actually holding back the progress of the church, holding back on, 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 on ministries and those kinds of things. Um, they get the idea of ownership. They get the idea of, of things have to be a certain way. You know, that's not true religion. Constantly reinvent yourself. Constantly reinvent yourself. Sometimes we we greatly desire to keep to stay pure before the Lord. So what we do is we become legalistic. Well, that's not really the right answer. The next the next lesson will be seeking God, and then we just have the last lesson authority. Um, so.